All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tirza Price. I'm a contributing editor at Book Riot, and I am so excited to present to you the 2020 reading log. Um, I think I deserve an honorary degree in Google Sheets for putting this together. It um, was not easy, but I'm so excited. Um, if you are into tracking your reading, if you want to start, I hope that you will give this um, baby a whirl because it has a lot of great fields where you can fill in data about your books. And then the true power in this reading log is that it's going to generate a lot of stats for you. Um, so you won't have to spend a lot of time uh, figuring out, um, you know, percentage of genres and number of books read and all that fun stuff. So um, I'm going to just do a video walkthrough to show you how this works. And then I am also going to show you how you can customize this reading log for your own reading because there are a ton of different fields and maybe they won't be useful to everybody, but um, I'm going to show you how to make it useful to you. So um, to start out, the link to the reading log is on our site, and it's going to take you to this very generic basic reading log. You're not going to be able to edit this because this is for everyone. So first thing you want to do is come up to File, click on that, and then click Make a Copy. And then um, you're going to make a copy. You can name it whatever you want. Um, like, let's see, my awesome 2020 reading log. And then you can get a template. You're going to go ahead and save it in your own drive. Um, and then click OK. And once you do that, you're going to get a copy um, that you can edit. So we're going to pretend that we did that. And then I'm going to hop over here to the example I've already created for you. Um, this example, I've put in a few books, pretending that I've read all these books in 2020 already, um, just to give you an idea of how it works. So um, when you see this wonderful page, um, you're going to be first coming to the reading log. But if you come down here, there are different pages, different sheets. Um, so we're going to start out in reading long, then I'm going to show you stats, charts, and the Read Harder Challenge. Um, and the Read Harder Challenge, if you're unfamiliar with it, is our annual reading challenge at Book Riot that challenges you to read 24 books um, over the course of a year that will get you outside of your comfort zone. So the really cool thing about this reading log is we've integrated that challenge right into it. But first, um, let's just take a walk through the reading log page. Um, you're going to start with title. Very simple. Title, author. New this year is a column for artist slash narrator. Uh, so if you listen to a lot of audiobooks or you read a lot of graphic novels and you want to differentiate um, between author and artist or author and narrator, you can now do so. Um, I like keeping track of my audiobook narrators because sometimes I write articles for the site on various audiobook narrators, so it's really nice to be able to scroll back and see everything. Um, but then, as you see down here with pumpkin heads, I just put Faith Aaron Hicks and Rainbow Rowell separated them. Um, you know, to each his own. If you want to just ignore that, you totally can. I'm going to walk through everything and then show you guys how to edit it. So then there's publisher, there's publication date, and then start date and finish date. Um, a quick note about dates is they are set to be written in this format. Pub dates can be any valid date, but start and finish dates have to be within 2020 because it's the 2020 reading long, and I'll show you why in a second. Um, if you did not finish a book, but you still want record that you attempted it or at least read some number of pages, um, you can mark it as DNF. No shade to Agatha Christie. We're just pretending I DNF that book. I actually read it earlier this year. Um, then you can record page number. And if it's an audiobook, you record the audiobook length. Um, format here, it's a drop down uh, menu. You can choose if it's print, digital, or audiobook. Source. Um, so this changed up just slightly this year. Um, for source, um, I put own TBR. So it's something that's on your TBR pile that you already own. 
um, differentiating that from purchased in 2020, um, cause some people have indicated to me that they like to, um, you know, challenge themselves to read books that they already own or challenge themselves to actually read the books that they purchased this year. Um, then we've got library, review, copy, gift, and borrow. Um, also new this year is retail source. So if you purchase this book and you want to indicate where you purchased it from, um, there's now a drop down menu for Indie, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Audible, Libro FM, used book sales, and iBooks. Um, so those are pretty much the big, big ones that I can think of. Um, again, I'm going to show you how to customize that. So you can choose. Um, now, if it's a book that you didn't purchase, you got from the library or it's a review copy, you can just leave that blank. No big deal. Same with amount paid. Um, so this is um, another column that people asked for that <laughs> might be potentially dangerous for some of us. Um, you can input how much you paid for a book and then you can keep track of how much you spend on books per year, which is either scary or scary awesome. I can't quite decide. Um, so again, you can leave that blank if you didn't buy it, that won't mess anything up. Then you're going to choose from between fiction and nonfiction. And then in form, you can choose between prose, poetry, novella, comics, essay, short story, and play. Um, for genre, um, so there are so many different genres out there. I tried to kind of keep it as simple as possible. Um, by combining some things, however, again... Your mileage may vary. I will show you how to edit this. So you choose a genre. Audience. Um, is it written for an adult, YA, or children's and middle grade audience? Own voices is simply a check or, or a blank um, for POC. So that is, is the author or artist person of color, the author, an artist and protagonist, or just the protagonist? Same with LGBTQIA, author, artist, protagonist, author, artist, and protagonist. Um, creator gender. So there's male. There's male slash female because sometimes authors collaborate together. If you have male and female author writing together, you can choose that one. Um, female, non-binary, and other for any other gender expressions that um, you may not have thought of. You can have an other column. You can also edit this column to include other genders as well. Um, reread, that's just a straight up X or, or no. Same with translation and nation of origin. So this is new this year as well um, because people were asking me if they could track that and why not. So with nation of origin, I just went and did a quick read through my own reading in 2019 and input a bunch of countries. Well, obviously, however, obviously this is not every single country, um, that a book could possibly come from. So you can, um, edit this and I'll show you how as well. Um, reason for reading. So was it for fun, for work, for school, for book club, or for your own personal development? If you want to distinguish between any of those, you certainly can. Um, I read a lot for work, so I thought it would be interesting to see actually how much I read for work versus for, <laughs> for fun. Um, so, okay, remember how we do start date and finish date? Well, if you fill that in, at the very end here, it's going to tell you how many days it took you to read that book. Um, so that's kind of a cool feature. And then it's going to also give you the average number of pages that you read per day and the average time um, that you listen to an audiobook per day. And then we have a star rating system. So um, giving you what Goodreads will never give us, which is half stars, half stars. Um, so through half a star up through five stars. So you can assign a book a star rating. Um, there's a read harder column here. I'm going to um, circle back around and show you what that does in a second. And then we have notes. Um, so if you want to write any notes, write a few words, um, if you want to expand upon your star rating, the notes column is for you. You can do whatever you like with it. Um, Personally, I use a notes column because I'm really bad at remembering content warnings after I've read a book. Um, I read so much that they all just sort of blur together. But because I do a lot of recommending both on the Read Harder show and other um, 
Big, Big Riot co- podcasts and site stuff, um, it's kind of important for me to remember when there might be some things that we just need to give people warnings for. So as I read, I will put content warnings there. So six months from now, I can look back and be like, oh, yes, I need to remember to tell people about this. Um, but however you want to use it, it's totally up to you. And then I did include like one extra bonus column because I cannot anticipate all of your needs. So if you want to do something else here, you can name this column, um, you know, like cover comments um, because somebody mentioned that they wanted a column about cover comments and you can just write love the cover, terrible cover. Um, or you can write cover designers down that you like, whatever you want. That column is for you. So um, when you first copy over your reading log template, um, the stats and the charts columns are going to look a little bit funky. Um, and they're going to look funky until you put in your first book. So this is why I've gone ahead and filled out um, our chart here with about eight books. Um, so if you click over to stats... This is where the magic happens. Um, this is a compilation of statistics about your reading from the taken from the reading log. So we'll do total books read. When you fill out a um, finish date on the reading log, um, then that number, or that book will be tabulated here. So total books read, seven. Total books dnf one. Total pages read, 1,900. Um, total hours listened to, and then it'll also give you how many um, hours that is in, in like days and hours and minutes. Um, oh yeah, and you can also, you can do anything you want with the size of these cells. Like it won't mess up the, um, the formulas. So total money spent, 63.97. That might be a dangerous column for myself. Um, and then it's just going to take you through, um, you know, format, fiction versus nonfiction, audience, um, form. Um, it's going to calculate or tally up the number of books and then give you a percentage right over here. So as you can see, we've gone through um, format, gender, POC, queer, in translation, own voices. Um, I've also done rereads, backlist books versus books published in 2020, because that's kind of fun. <laughs> and I know it's so crazy to think about, but books published in 2021. Um, because in about this time next year, that might be relevant for those of us who read advanced copies. Um, so source, um, we're going to have a percentage of, you know, own TBR versus purchased, etc. And retail source, same here. And um, this um, percentage column is going to be percent of all purchase, not percentage of all the books you read. So that is pretty cool. Um, and then if we go up here, number of books read per month, um, stars. If you want to know how many five-star books you read this year versus how many one-star books, you can figure that out. Um, and then I also broke down page number, too, because I always think it's interesting to see um, what the length trend of my books are each year. Um, reason for reading and genre. And then way over here, off to the side, is our nation of origin. So, um, yeah, that's a pretty cool system if I do say so myself, um, there's a lot of really great information that you can just see at a glance. However, if you are more visually um, inclined, such as myself, you're going to click on the charts tab and there are visual representations. There are pie charts and graphs. This is really fun. So as you can see, um, we have pie charts for finished versus DNF, fiction versus nonfiction, audience, format, form, genre, um, pub date, books by page count, um, book source, retail source, books finished by month, star ratings, author, artist gender, nation of origin, 
POC authors and protagonists, queer authors and protagonists, books in translation, none, none in translation in my little example setup, and then own voices versus non-owned voices. So that's just another fun visual for you all to look at your reading. Um, I find it really helpful to um, be able to look at these pie charts, especially um, this one, the POC authors versus white authors, because in general, I try to keep my personal reading um, pretty diverse. Um, so if that POC authors and artists percentage ever slips below like 30%, that's a good indication to me that I need to start reading more diversely. I try to keep it somewhere between 30 and 50%. And I did pretty, pretty well for 2019. Um, you know, obviously queer author and artist, that's a little bit harder, um, because you're not always going to know if somebody is out, how they identify. That's totally fine. This, um, this is for you. So you can use it and fill it out however you like. So the last sheet we're going to look at is the Read Harder Challenge, which we're super excited about. So Read Harder 2020, we have all of the challenges off here to the side. Um, and then we have column for title, author, and notes. So the really cool thing about this is um, as you were going around and filling out um, this chart, if you read a book that satisfies a challenge, you don't actually have to come over here and like type in the title and the author. No, no. All you have to do is come over to the side here and look at the challenge number. Not the row number, but the challenge number here in the orange. So read a YA nonfiction book. I did that. That's challenge number one. I'm going to come over here to reading log. Um, so my YA nonfiction is A Thousand Sisters by Elizabeth Wayne, which is about the Soviet um, female fighter pilots in World War II. It's a great book. So um, I'm just going to actually scroll all the way over and remember that read harder column here. If we just put in the challenge number, which is number one here, put it right there. If you click back over here, boom, A Thousand Sisters by Elizabeth Wayne. It's already there. Um, so that's really fun. And there's not going to be a lot of extra typing. You can just do that for any challenge. Just find that challenge number here in orange and then put it in that column in your reading log. Um, also new, we have a notes um, column for the Read Harder 2020 um, challenge sheet. Just because, um, you know, I'm a huge nerd who likes to plan out reading and I get really excited when I find a reading list and I want to, you know, put down possible titles that I might want to read. So you can, you know, use, utilize that however you want. Um, but I put down the 57 bus because I wanted to remember like, oh, you know, maybe I want to reread that. Um, I put down for read a graphic memoir, good talk, because I remind myself to go pick up good talk. I hear it's amazing. Um, so yeah, read a book and oh, I already got um, roundhouse in there. So then at the very bottom, it's going to show you how many challenges you have completed and how many challenges to be read right there. So that is the read harder 2020 challenge sheet. Um, so now that you know how this um, reading log functions, I'm going to come back over here to reading log and I'm going to show you how you can possibly, um, you know, edit this to make it more to your own liking. Um, so you can always, um, if you don't want to use a column, um, I don't recommend deleting it um, just because I cannot guarantee if you delete something that it might not mess something up in one of the other sheets. It shouldn't, but um, I recommend if you want to just like don't want to even mess with artist and narrator, um, you would click on the column, you would hit control click or right click um, or whatever computer you're using and just hide that. Um, so you can hide that. And then if you ever wanted to get it back, eh, no, what did I do? Goodness gracious. Um, well, we can undo that. Um, so yes, you can hide that if you don't want to. Um, and there should be those little arrows there. So you can always get it back if you want. 
um, for the dates. So the dates for the start and finish date, they are set to be dates in 2020. Pub dates are any valid date. However, if you don't like this date format, if you want a different date format, all you have to do is highlight the row and then come up here to this one, two, three format. Click on that and then you can totally change your date format. Um, so if you want to just click that, it, it'll automatically change it to the way that's written out. If you don't like the way that's written out, you can go to more formats, more date and time formats. You can choose almost whatever you, anything you want. I like my dates to look like this. So I'm gonna leave it like that. You can change the formats for here as long as they continue to be 2020 dates. Um, so, okay, let's go over here to retail source and I'm going to show you how you can add things to drop down menus and you can do this, um, take the same principle and apply it to any of the drop down menus on the reading log. Um, but let's just say that you, um, want to include your favorite indies like you have two or three indies that you buy from and you want to distinguish between them rather than putting them all under the indie umbrella that's totally fine you're gonna click on a um, cell here and then you're gonna command or no not command control click um, and then you're going to scroll down to data validation so um, the cell range N3, we're gonna add a colon N so it does it for all of the cells in that column. And then here's your list of items. We've got Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Indie, blah, blah, blah. So let's say, hey, I don't even ever buy books for FFI books. You can just replace that, whoops. Um, let's say I'm gonna put in books and mortar that's one of my amazing indies here in grand rapids michigan um and then i'm gonna put in um, brilliant books which is another great indie book store that i visit in traverse city michigan um so and then i'm gonna erase indie because you know i've already distinguished well actually maybe i'll keep indie because sometimes i buy stuff from other indies so when you are doing this, you can put spaces in between um, words, like if you want books and mortar and brilliant books and Barnes and Noble. But when you are listing different terms, you don't put a space between them. You just put one little comma. So that's why it looks kind of scrunched up and weird. So you can change this however you want. And then um, just make sure that it's for N3 through and the entire column then you're gonna hit save so when you click here books and mortar brilliant books they're here so um, let's say that I purchased this actually from books and mortar and I got this one from brilliant books um, boom pretty easy to do however when you do this then you do have to change things up in the stats so what we're going to do is come immediately over here and um let's see we replaced ibooks so we're going to do books and mortar However, when we click over here, you're going to have to change something up here. So you see how it's counting everything in row or column N, but it's only counting things that say iBooks. You're gonna change that to books and mortar. Make sure your spelling is correct because they have to match exactly across the sheets. So when we do that and just click out of here, awesome, it changed it. That's amazing. Um, however, if I'm recalling correctly, I did add brilliant books. So we're gonna come over here. This is why I put this down at the bottom in case you want to add things. Um, you can do so, you can do, oh my gosh, let me see if I can spell. Brilliant books. And this lovely um, code here, you are going to copy it we're going to put it right here only we're going to change it to 
brilliant. Again, with the spotlight. Brilliant books. And see, it pulls it over. Now, um, obviously this looks a little bit more intimidating, but we're gonna copy that code over. And we're going to put it right there. But here's the thing. We're gonna have to add that column that we put in for Brilliant Books. So I'm gonna put my little cursor over here, do a plus, and then get rid of that. Click on that, and because we want the percentage for this here for Brilliant Books, we're going to change this to B52, but we also have to add B52 here at the end, so B52. All right, and hit enter. There we go. It's going to show up as 0.25. You click on that. You come up here to more formats, that one, two, three, and you're going to say percentage, please. And it's going to show up like that. And then if you want this to be gray like the rest of them, you can just highlight that, come up here to the fill color, and it's part of the theme. So it's that light gray right there. There you go. So that is how you edit on the stats sheet. Now, if we come over here to charts, uh, ba -bum, come on down to retail source. So, okay, it has brilliant books, it has books and mortar, it has Barnes and Noble, and it has Libro FM. That's really awesome. So it should carry over. However, if for whatever reason it doesn't, you are just going to click on the chart and then click on these one, um, these three little dots here and hit edit chart going to bring up this chart editor for the data range. If you click on select data range, you can, this, it'll bring up this little um, pop-up box and then you can actually click over to stats. So I generated all these charts from the stats page. So if you added a bunch of different retailers here and they aren't all included in the chart, what you would do is you would highlight this. Let's delete it then all you have to do is draw a box around everything that you've created. You hit OK. You hit, oh, I think it's already automatically changes over. So you just come over here to charts and your chart should be updated. And then you can just exit out of that chart editor. So that's how you um, edit any of these charts. Um, just by clicking on them, click on the edit, and then you can change the range by just coming over here and drawing a box around whatever the range is. So with that knowledge in hand, you can um, change a lot of things over here. You can add different forms, although I think I've covered most of them. You can add different genres. You can um, different, differentiate between audiences if you want to break it up even further from children's and middle grade. Um, you can um, add different nations of origin. So um, this, you know, I did it very basically. However, you want to, um, however you want to set this up, though, it's totally up to you. I know that we had a discussion um, among the Book Riot editors. Um, so for example, I have Roundhouse on here by Louis Zerger. And for um, this chart, I put the nation of origin as the United States. However, that's not true in the strictest sense. Um, so perhaps you want to put the nation of origin as, um, I believe it's Ojibwe. So you can totally do that. You would just, you know, select this. You can either control click or come up here to data and data validation. Make sure it's Z3 through all of Z. So your drop down menu includes them all. And then you can add the Ojibwe Nation, just like that. Hit save. Um, of course, you will have to carry that over here by adding that new nations down here and then making sure that you're copying that fun little code up here um, and adjusting it for all of your new um, additions. So hopefully that makes sense and that is not too complicated. Um, I do not have a huge background in numbers, or in, I mean in sheets, and I was able to figure this out. Um, so hey, if an English major who almost failed high school statistics can figure this out, I have faith in you. I know you can do it. 
Um, so that is how we can revise this. Um, and I really hope that it turns out to be a really useful tool for you. I hope you enjoy the charts and the stats. I hope you have fun doing the Read Harder Challenge. Um, you can see a bunch of fun content about the Read Harder Challenge on bookriot.com. And there's going to be a lot of fun stuff coming up in 2020. So have a fantastic 2020 reading year. Um, if you have any questions about this reading log, feel free to give me a shout on social media. Um, you can email me at Book Riot. My email address is Tirza, T-I-R-Z-A-H, at riotnewmedia.com. If you have any issues, just let me know. Otherwise, have a fantastic reading year. Thanks.